transmitting to you from Old Heart Radio. Right, this is another episode of Coffee and Contemplation. Yes, it's true. It's me. It's you. And we're in it together, one way or another. I'm drinking a cup of coffee, trying to ripen up my coconut, and you're clearly here listening to me, unless you're not, and then I'm obviously not talking to you. But that's okay, because that means that I'm talking to somebody, hopefully. Either way, we all know that uh, that... that is something (laughs) my brain's working in mysterious ways this morning uh either way like i said i'm drinking a cup of coffee uh trying to ripen up my brain and i'm thinking a little bit about a movie i watched just the other day because it's october it's halloween it's spooky time i don't know you tell me what it might be you think i don't know the difference between a wolf and a man no bela became a wolf and you killed him A werewolf can be killed only with a silver bullet or a silver knife or a stick with a silver handle. Whoever is bitten by a werewolf and lives becomes a werewolf himself. Interesting enough. That is the movie that we're talking about, where those sound clips came from. We're talking about The Wolfman. The Wolfman. The 1941 Universal Classic. Um, The Wolfman always stood out. When I was a kid, it always stood out as one of my favorite characters. Maybe because of the, the, just the visual of, you know, like the beast, the hair, the, maybe like the, the, the fact that like it was just, I don't know, you just turned into a fucking animal. I don't know why, but The Wolfman was always one of my top like universal monsters one of my favorite kind of creatures and you know to this day it still uh, fascinates me i mean even in the in the 1941 movie they make this really like gentle pass at uh lyco like lycanthrap lycothrampy well like lycanthrap oh man i'm just not pronouncing it this morning either way that the (laughs) the psychological condition where you do believe that you transform or you know you are wolf-like in some state uh lycanthropy i believe is how you pronounce it (laughs) either way so the wolf man though it's just such a it's such a very predictable movie but very brilliant because like the, i mean watching i don't know this sounds stupid uh in 2019 but watching the transformation scene like especially like the just like just the foot where they like the feet where they transform his feet it was just like it i imagine like in 1941 that that would have blown my fucking dick off like i would have fucking freaked out in the theater if i saw like that i mean by today's standards, it's definitely like a very gentle transformation. Uh, you know, you know the kind of techniques they used. I mean, um, but it it it, it just it would have got me. It it gets me still. It just looks really cool and really clean. Um, Lon Chaney Jr. though stars as uh, Larry Larry Talbot Talbert. Uh, I mean, Larry, Larry Talbot. Uh, and he is like coming home, like prodigal son kind of status. He rolls home. Uh, all of a sudden, boom, motherfucking Bella Lugosi and his gypsy and his gypsy lady are in town and you know, werewolf shit happens and Lon Chaney Jr. Gets bit saving this lady. He beats a werewolf to death with a, with a, a stick handle he like buys a walking cane earlier in the movie and beats a werewolf to death with the the, the handle of it because obviously it's made out of silver which clearly is one of the only ways you can kill werewolves <laughs> uh, but so obviously Lon Chaney gets turned into the motherfucking werewolf we all know this by now right um but some of the things, I mean, like the rest of the cast, I just wanted to talk about. Uh, Cloud Rains played his father, Sir John Talbot. Uh, Warren Williams played Dr. Lloyd. 
Uh, Evelyn Anchors uh, plays Gwen Conlittle, I believe. Gwen. She plays Gwen. Okay. And I don't know. Just, it was like, it's not really a notable cast, to be honest. Like, uh, Dracula, like, the cast really got you. The guy that plays Van Helsing was a nice, like, addition to that cast. Everybody wants to focus on Bella Lugosi, but, you know, it's like, oh, shit, there's actually somebody else giving a valid performance as well. In this, Lon Chaney Jr., it was, comes off as so desperate and crazed once he finds out he's a werewolf. It definitely steals the fucking show. But the rest of the cast really just, like, doesn't do shit. Like, you, this movie is so designed to just spook you and shock you with the transformation and the idea of the of the werewolf, I think, that it really didn't pay much attention to, like, the actors or the cast around the central idea of just werewolf. Um, mainly because, I mean, like, probably bringing that visual to screen was a feat at the time and also it probably was like the main focus of that movie you know they wanted a visual character that could spook people and not really like a bunch of like creepy dialogue like like in dracula <laughs> ah shit shout outs shout outs to evil l shout outs to yellow teeth shout outs to uh castle roll shout outs to mooner six shout outs to uncaged shout outs to uh my younger brother bugatron shout outs to anybody listening out there obviously somebody's listening i don't know who you are but that's okay uh if you are out there go check out the instagram old heart radio on instagram and i think we're old heart in space out on twitter uh twitter is a fucking weird world man i don't use that very often but it is a strange environment i'm about to go follow oj simpson on there stop me (laughs) god there's too many mr t's in the goddamn room either way so one of the interesting things obviously about the Wolfman, the, 19, the from 1941, is the uh, the uh, the special effects that were done. So one of the things that stood out about the the production of it was was that Lon Chaney Lon Jr. Uh, had extensive special effects happen to him. Like so, but but to the point where it was like it was almost detrimental to him like he had to sit still for hours on end there was like i mean he had some pretty outlandish reports like reports of them like actually like like needling hair into his fucking arms and shit or like whatever but i mean it was it was worth it it holds up it holds up till now till 2019 uh but real really like what what's what's kind of interesting is that they this wasn't the first werewolf movie so the, the general designer, I think his name is Jack Pierce, uh, originally designed like a suit for this other werewolf movie called Werewolf of London from 1935. They basically, in that movie, they wanted to have a more recognizable like human face in the werewolf. So they redesigned it, but he re Jack, but Mr. Pierce repurposed, uh, the, the, original design for this movie the 1941 wolf man um so like it was you know kind of like this guy was like the go-to for the fucking wolfenizing of people but i really want to check out that original werewolf of london i've never seen that one uh and that i might be the it might be the first werewolf movie that universal's done i'm not sure on that don't quote me on that um one of the other meetups uh included i mean there was like they they did a couple of sequels to this movie but one of the uh extra meetups was uh frankenstein meets the wolfman as well as um one of my favorites abbott and costello meet frankenstein which brought in a bunch of different characters i mean like honestly i love Like, I love crossovers. I love seeing Marvel and DC crossover. I love seeing, like, DC and the, uh, like, and the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe crossover. I love seeing the freaking Planet of the Apes and the Green Lanterns crossover. I love crossovers. And, and when I was a kid, these were some of the first kind of crossovers I ever saw. Like, my dad showed us Abbott and Costello when I was a kid. Uh, and then on Halloween, he showed us Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein. And 
if I am correct in remembering this, it had that movie has a not only just Frankenstein, it has, it has the Wolfman as well as uh, Dracula. And, you know, then you see like Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. And I mean, the Universal Monsters were really like some of the first crossovers I ever experienced as a kid, as like a young, like, you know, per- like, taking it in. And and I loved them. I loved seeing those characters like just, just come together on the screen. And I still do to this day. It's so cool. It's so cool when there's cross like cross company connection. Um, but yeah, like some of these like these movies were just the Universal Monster movies were just still like some of my favorites. They're just classics, man. Uh, the Universal the Wolfman is the only Universal monster to be played by the same actor in all film 1940s film appearances. That's all done by Lon Chaney Jr., who really owned that role. Uh, again, though, it, it, his his performance was preceded by Henry Hull, H-U-L-L, in The Werewolf of London, which I want to check out. Um, the Like, the original film, uh, that Werewolf in London, I don't think was a huge box office success. Uh, but, you know, the, were- the Wolf Man was definitely a popular one. Like, it, it produced sequels. Like I said, Frankenstein meets the Wolf Man. Uh, as well as, like, he appears in House of Dracula, uh, you know, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, and, uh, you know, a lot of these, like, Bela Lugosi pops up in a lot of these, but he plays different characters, like, he, Bela Lugosi was in The Wolfman as the fucking original wolf, like, he gets, he's the, the wolf that gets beaten to death by, by fucking Larry, Larry Talbot, by Lon Chaney Jr., uh, which is awesome. <laughs> um, but like I said, like, I mean, they, you know, crossovers, man. I like these, these characters all just made me love crossovers. Uh, you know, they've tried to reboot the Wolfman a couple of times. Like, like Benicio del Toro was involved in that Wolfman movie from like a handful of years ago. That just stunk. Like it was just not cool. I'm just so surprised that they haven't been able to revamp this character. I mean, we all know that Universal's been, like, trying to redo their monster universes for for a while now, unsuccessfully with the mummy that we make fun of regularly on Matinee Edition, uh, you know, and with, like, Dracula fucking untold or whatever the bullshit, but the Wolfman, make a good Wolfman movie, make, make a good werewolf movie that'll scare the fuck out of people while also reminding them that there's an inner beast. We all have one. And that's the thing I think I love about the wolf. It reminds us that there is an animal deep inside us. Savage as fuck sometimes, but it's there. Either way, I hope y'all have a good day. Go out there and use your brains for good, because every day is what? A good day to ripen up that coconut. That's right. If you said it along with me, well, then you're special. If not, that's okay. Then you're not special. You're just uh, another person who doesn't listen to this podcast, and that's fine, too. You know, offense to you. Uh, <laughs> either way, uh, thanks for listening. Like I said, check us out online, Old Heart Radio on Instagram and Spotify and iTunes and Old Heart in Space on Twitter. Have a good day. Keep your stick on the ice. Evil spell. Pentagram. Wolfbane. Oh, I'm sick of the whole thing. I'm going to get out of here.